Hello, my Aquarius clan. I am tuning in <laughs> to your signals right now. Just had a really deep heart to heart with Leo. And I always like to come into your sessions from that space, right? You guys are my great mirrors, my great teachers, uh, my heart and soul on so many levels. Uh, the depth of connection with you is always so special. <laughs> and, and I like it too because I do get into this other frequency with you um, that I don't share with any other energy at all. Uh, it's just quite the ride with my Aquarians. Like some crazy stuff. Some crazy stuff happens when we sit down and talk, as you know. Let's talk about your note first. Uh, you know, September is a breath. It's a breath for all of us. And Virgo season is symbolic on so many levels, especially after a summer of retrogrades and eclipses that shook up the world, shook up individuals, shook up the energy in, in an effort to Transform as always. That's what we're always doing. We are beings. We are actively being all the time, right? So we're always transforming. But, you know, for you, Virgo season will always play a unique role because it is your eighth house of transformation and death. And then it leads right into Libra season, which is the expansive vision. Poetic. And... Reinvention on the physical plane was the first sentence that came to mind when I sat with your energy this morning. Reinvention on the physical plane. Virgo season is transformational for you as physical beings. That's not all you are. Your physical body is a partnership you have with your vibration, with your soul. It's a way to experience things you can't experience on soul level, right? Feelings of touch and taste and sight, the way you see. It's an interesting placement to have Virgo as your eighth house energy, as your transformational rebirth energy, because of that relationship to physical. Page of Pentacles. But isn't that so fitting for my Aquarians out there who I know it's... It's a, it's a struggle to be in the physical world often in the way that it is, right? You want to utilize the physical world and everything that it has in this big playground that we can create and entertain and connect in, but it doesn't do it the way that your big vision always wants to bring it in to do, right? Ten of swords. Yep. Eighth house. Transformation. It's intense. I'm looking at my note here just to see. Six of Cups, okay. Um, the transformation is on a soul level. It is on a soul level, this Virgo season for you, yeah. As always, I mean, you guys are um, good at morphing. Uh, but you will see it, I think, in the physical world around you, which is the, the twist, the epic twist of September, right? September's energy, as far as astrology is concerned, Two of Cups is very sweet. I guess that's a good word to describe it. Sweet. Mercury goes home to Virgo on the 5th. It's direct. It's back in Virgo. It's feeling good. We have Saturn going direct in Capricorn the next day on the 6th. We have Venus going into Scorpio on the 9th, along with a new moon in Virgo that same day. You can kind of see here, Venus in Scorpio is very investigative. It's very deep. Five of Wands. Some tensions. Some things that must go. We have Mercury then heading into Libra on the 21st, and then Libra starting the very next day. So Mercury and the Sun will have a little conjunction. Great for communicating. Nine of Pentacles. And we have a full moon in Aries on the 24th. Third house energy for you. Communicative energy for you. And Pluto goes direct at the end of the month in Capricorn. Page of Cups. Wow. Wow. Aquarians, as almost always, there is a mixed bag of things going on with you. You have a lot of um, 
different strands of energy pulling at you this month. So the the um, the astrology is there as a breath after after eclipse season, after all this retrograde action. We are taking a breath in September. We are taking stock. We are checking in. We are connecting in with our souls, with our beings in this physical world. Because here we are. We're watching. We're creating these videos. We're watching this together. We're sitting here on YouTube in this physical world doing this stuff right now, right? We are exchanging energy. But we're also here doing this. We're taking a breath. We are taking stock of how that is affecting us. And for you guys, you are, you have, you have a lot of tentacles, energetic tentacles out there. Um, as I'm looking at these cards and it kind of makes sense with this whole reinvention on the physical plane, right? I mean, look right away. Page of Pentacles, Ten of Swords. Page of Pentacles is often about our physical health. You know, like he kind of comes in, it's like, where are you sabotaging yourself? Where are you overworking out? Maybe where are you undernourishing? Where are you not honoring what your body is telling you? That's a big theme that's coming up for everybody in Virgo season, I'm noticing. But especially for you, there's something that is taking your energy and running you ragged. There's something haunting you and running you ragged. Watch this, Aquarians. Watch this. I'm going to get really stern with you right here because I can, I've can. i seen you guys do this so many times where you just run yourself to the very edge of your energetic limits. And you wonder why you don't feel good and you wonder why you don't have any energy left to give people because you're performing for people and you're, and you're con concerned about the big issues and you're, you're trying to do everything. You're trying to wear 10 hats. Those 10 hats will stab you in the back eventually. Watch it. Watch your energy. Watch where your body starts screaming at you to slow down because you can't hold all this. There is, there is the eighth house of transformation, though. It is death and resurrection is the symbolism of that. So especially for those Aquarius risings out there, September and Virgo season specifically has a lot of that energy of shedding an old skin, sloughing it off and letting it go so that you are free to see the expansive vision of Libra season. That's what this is telling me. Check in there. Get rest when you can. Because... You have that, you have that arm of energy noodling around. And then you have a visitation. That's the best way I can put it, a visitation. Six of cups, two of cups is pretty powerful. And it tells me there is a connection with another person that is wrapped up in your physical body, in your fatigue, and in the expansion into the next phase of your life. There is There are connections in your life that are important, that can help you heal, that can help you take better care of your body, that can help you reinvent your relationship with your body and with your physical presence in this earth. This can be very romantic. This is deep connection energy. This is deep partnership energy. This is very romantic energy. I mean, so for those of you looking for partnership, very good energy for you. However, that's not the only thing going on when you get six of cups, two of cups. I'd be very simplistic if I just left it at that. Oh, you'll meet somebody. Mm -mm. Or, you know, oh, your partnership will just blossom. Sure. That's very possible. But this is about energy flow, right? This is about the ability to give energy and receive energy in equal measure. This is about not over fantasizing what relationship should be. Relationship in any form. Friendship, family, partner, child, parent. There has to be flow. There has to be ease. And what I see here is there are people who can give you that healing and that ease when you are possibly running yourself a little bit ragged. When you are not honoring your energetic needs. Because Aquarius, 
There's one thing I know about you, and I'm getting goosebumps right now. There's one thing I know about you, Aquarius. It's that you're doing a lot. You are generally, Aquarians, are, you guys are natural empaths. You feel on a lot of different energetic levels. Um, a lot of you out there don't even realize that you do and that you are processing. You have a lot of processors running at all times. So even if you think you have a really simple life and you're just doing what you want to be doing and you know who you love and you have your routine, you are a fixed sign after all. So routine is part of your deal at times. Even when you think that it's just simple, you're actually running on a lot of different levels. And this month is a, is a chance. It's a breath that is there for you to not only check in with your health and feel your embodiment, feel that transformation, but to let other energy come in and meet you and help you heal. It's a big healing journey here, my friends. The first half of the month, leading into the new moon in Virgo. Big healing. Very quiet. You don't always have to be the performer. I'll just tell you that right now. So, second half of the month. Let's look at this. Because as we get into the second half of the month, we are heading in to, you know, we have uh, Mars is going into your sign again, direct, going back into your sign on the uh, 10th of the month. So after that new moon, we have that Mars action back at you in Aquarius, right? So you have the first half of the month, you have this deep healing journey, this deep connection with your body, this deep connection with some people close to you, connection, 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 visitation and um, reinvention of your physical space. Then we have Mars getting revved up in your sign. And what comes of that is really interesting with this five of wands. That's a conflict card, right? And a lot of times this can be little spats, little points of, of fighting, um, contention, right? Now you guys tend to, uh, yeah, generally speaking, Aquarians, you know I love you. I can't get enough of your energy. I have so much fun with Aquarians. You guys light me up and give me so much energy. And I love you. Um, but I think you all can probably agree that people either like love you or can't figure you out. Um, and the people that can't figure out, they tend to want to pick at you and they tend to want to pick fights and kind of get um, in there and nitpick and nag. And maybe you do too because you are sticklers for detail. <sighs> Pick your battles wisely. Pick your battles wisely. You are in a transformational month. You are in a time where your energy is going to be kind of dipping down and then coming back up. And it can be easy to feel a little fractious. Maybe unnecessarily at times. Because this is all just shallow, superficial, right? This is, this is super shallow and superficial. So whatever this is, look what's under this. Nine of Pentacles, Page of Cups, Knight of Swords, or Knight of Wands. This is good stuff, you guys. The things you decide to sit with in the breath of this softer astrology this month, the breath of this softer energy this month, it really gives us all a chance to just sit with anywhere where we may have felt pain body stuff, um, any injury, any anything that was holding us that we didn't have time to pay attention to over the last few months because it's been so busy and crazy. It's just a chance to do that. When you, when you um, take advantage of that energy, it creates the space for good things to come and meet you. And in this reinvention phase, and as we go into Libra season, and we hit into a full moon in Aries right at the end of the month, and as we hit into Pluto going direct again, good things come in. Like really great things come in because this Nine of Pentacles, resurgence of health in your physical body, a, a feeling of connection there with that, uh, feeling that you are in the right place at the right time, feeling that you're back in the flow, feeling that things make sense again. That's all coming in with the Nine of Pentacles. And then you have <sighs> romance, fun, um, surprise, uh, daring. Maybe you have somebody who's got, woo, they've got like a spark for you, baby. Somebody does. I think somebody has a major crush on you and would really like to explore that. 
And if it's not a crush, somebody wants to work with you, somebody wants to meet you halfway, somebody wants to do something with you, because they see you. And there is a sense here of taking a risk, going and meeting a new horizon, shifting into a higher gear, getting into new trouble. Oh man, Aquarians, I have a feeling October, you are going to be so much trouble. Because once you get into Libra season, you can see and think clearly. You can see and think clearly. And so you can start to get your vision back. You can start to get your feet under you. Now watch it because you can just get right back to that, that physical spirit fatigue really fast if you don't take the time, right? So you want to spend the first part of the month figuring out where that spiritual fatigue is coming from, reconnecting with body, reconnecting with those that love you, allowing that energetic flow, and then you connect with your vision again, then you know what your mission statement is again, and then you start moving on it. And you take a risk, and you take a leap of faith, and there's a surprise element here. Big surprise element, something you did not expect coming. From one week to the next, man, this is a whole new surprise. And that's what's fun about September too, is I find that even though it is quiet, and even though it does have like it's a lot more mellow than the eclipse season and the retrograde season. There are surprises coming out of the woodwork. Queen of Cups. There's the, a lot of cups action going on for you, Aquarians. Um, a lot of this intuitive energy. The energy of sticking with yourself. Paying attention. Paying attention to your intuitive guidance system. People like you too. Man, somebody's got a crush. Creatively, romantically, socially, I don't know. There's a crush going on here, baby. There's no arguing with that. Um, I don't blame them. <laughs> I don't blame them, I mean. How can you not have a crush on Aquarians? Uh, what to even say? I'm at a loss for words. It's easy. Be in the flow. Accept yourself. Pick your battles wisely. Let people like you. You'll do amazing. I love you guys. I'll see you in October. You're going to be trouble. I can already tell. <laughs> I can already tell you're going to be trouble, but it'll be great. Um, please come join me on Instagram at the Sarah Tarot. I would love to see you over there. You can also book a private session with me. I'll leave my website and my email in the description box so you can get in touch with me. I'm trying my best to keep up with emails, so... Hopefully I do a good job with that. I'm also wearing my lovely friend Tiffany's pink loon jewelry, as usual. These are all, you know, ethically sourced stones, full metals. Um, you know, this is, this is gold-filled, rose gold-filled, sterling silver-filled jewelry. So you're really getting quality. 15% off. I will leave all of that in the description box. I love you guys. To the moon and back. To the stars and back. All of that. You know it. You know how much I love you. Take care of yourselves. Honor your energy and your energetic system. If you feel tired, rest. If you feel rambunctious, get it out there. Flow. And I'll see you in October.